Jet looking for Org. Opting for a lot of util to start off their T campaign. T side nuke start. And we are seeing Licky set him up with some flashes for a top pop. Straight out hot here. Uh oh, perfect weapon for the job. Blocky yeah, catches it on the Glock. Even trades. If they can just force Vozy or Hampus out of main, the space for a plant. Licky can try and get that smoke down. Is it main? Is it heaven? Oh, he's being pushed now. Problems dropping. Vozy's still not dead. Kit's in the sight. Rez takes one down on the floor. It's still a two on two. Still a smoke and a flash here for Licky. Don't know how he's going to use this late. Problems, they need to take the fights. It's being diffused. Oh no, it's being diffused. That's, it's being diffused and under their nose, the diffuse comes in, the kit on the floor. And so is the majority of the team. Okay, well, we had the one expert Oz at the top of the screen there and uh, quite clearly NIP being favorites in this one, right? LFO, we've spoken about it time and time again. For them, there's not a whole lot expected, right? There wasn't a whole lot expected of them coming on in. We know the circumstances. Learning is uh, the name of the game for them. But uh, there's certain things that they need to, to work on. And, and some of the bits and bobs, we even had Hampus here watching their game yesterday. Uh, it's just the lack of confidence in certain situations. And that was another one. Yeah. Two players corralled by one main guy while the bomb was already being tapped. You know, a bit of, bit of confidence needed to uh, win that round. Take some confidence to get that bomb down and opt to go all in, hoping up against the M4s that they can best it with just the single or rather double Galil. Now, already down secret stairs. What's your what's your take on this, Chad? Uh, look, uh, already got a rotator lower here. They're hearing this. It's very, very noisy. Rez is in a great spot. Power position. He can fight everywhere and out the door they swing. One, dead. Two, well, bombs dropped. And three, looking good. There's more damage done. Oh, Rez is going to have a field day today, isn't he? <laughs> That, uh, that looked all too easy. He's already the highest rated player within the tournament so far, or the group. I guess we need to make sure we condense it down to groups sure. because they're go going to be disconnected as we move over the next three weeks of play. But Rez has been having a great time, right? And, and look, uh, Hampus mentioned it in the interview, right? That it could have been harder groups for them to be in and more with these stand-in issues. G2, Alexi B back later today. Obviously, Fnatic, we know over there that they have multiple players standing in, but Poison's looking good. Alex is still calling the best game he can, and I think Mezzi's showing why he's a gem. So even with a couple of these issues, they're still big names, but it has hasn't been the highest quality of Counter-Strike. So good for them to farm up some confidence and NIP continuing to show how much they have, really, with the, the constantly changing fifth door of the roster. Back down to the pistols here. LFO blanked on round number two with the force by. The Deagles are out. There's a P250 in the hands of Savage. A tech nine for Hazard, but no util. So in rounds like this, you are hoping that a CT over peaks and you can actually do the damage the other way. Hampus gets the opening. Licky. We'll just have to sit and watch. Yeah, Hampus is a real problem for uh, many a team in his yard holds. He's had multiple games where we've just been uh, uh, so impressed. I've, I've watched him gracefully find and pip gaps in Na'Vi smoke walls on nukes. Yeah. He is no slouch here. He really is not going to make this easy. And that's one of the things, right? You, you can look at a way that a, a top team like a Na'Vi would approach a map like this and how many openings they can manufacture just w with their you know, first three or four smokes of the round. There's a molly, there's a flash, it could be down fan. That's a shot, okay. Need a few more of those before we get excited. But uh, yeah, I guess LFO, what we saw yesterday on Ancient was they were executing what I would call in darkness, right? They didn't actually know where the CTs were. They were hoping that the utility forced the rotations that they didn't. And it's, it's, it's tough, right? It's definitely tough. Oh, there you go. Not wanting to go down to the MP9. Gives himself up to the Molotov. And 3-0. Uh, NIP. I think it's quite impressive with the, with NIP, right? Because it, obviously a lot of critique for them and the different roster changes that have and haven't happened over time. So whether that's been in-game leading or fragging. If you can get a consistent Plopski, you can get a consistent res. Right now we're starting to cook. Now we're starting to talk about it. Now we, we, I've said it time and time again, we shouldn't be talking about device and NIP until we actually get some news about device and NIP. But Fozzy seems to be very serviceable. Getting the job done. Here we are into the first gun round. Fast yard smokes. Apoc looking across behind that. Massive gap. And oh, he's already dead. Yeah, Apoc does go down. I was suspecting as the smokes did go up. Didn't even wait for them. Posey, though, we spoke his name. He is under a lot of pressure now, tucked into that corner. I'm susceptible to a flash or Coming a Coming closer. He's found it, gotten away as well. Savage, just the tail snipped off. And they're not clearing him, Hazard. I think he may have been flashed there. Albeit for a moment, but nasty way to lose into your first gun round. And so much time still on the clock as well. Yeah, Licky looks like he's going to be playing that squeaky door lurk, but it's not going to matter. Sterling out ramp, they can turtle up now. Across the T's, dot the I's. Hampus has rerouted, completely found himself a new home. Rez is now dealing with this position over towards Hell. 
I don't want to say this one's done, but uh, it, it's done. Licky's dead is just one to find. And that time, 45, about to be spotted here, coming around the corner, Sterling, bomb. And an AK delivery for Rez here. I'm sure you're enjoying that. Oh, oh, oh. How dare you. A little bit too early there. Yeah, the AK, though, I'm sure is going to be a hot prospect for whomever can get their grubby mitts on it, descending the ladder now and scooping it up. So call it 4-0, CT's off to the flying start. And uh, yeah, you can see that the boys so far from looking for Org, just in a bit of an absence of, uh, of kills as well. Everyone's at least got themselves on the board nice and early. That's good, right? Yeah, it, it really does linger in your head, you know, if you're sitting on that donut for a while there and then that starts to override uh, the focus. But it, it, it's true, like, because you know that people are looking at your stats, you know that we're here commentating how, how the kills are going. So it can play in your mind, but Tech Nines are out and five of which, let's see what they look to. Assault round number five with squeaky door blown open. You two, well, flashes smokes, but going to be hard here. These are the pot flashes for top set up by Licky again. Savage with main smoke. Okay. Makes sense. Throw the tech nines in. Not clearing your rafters. And Plovsky does not hesitate to mow down three. Licky at least with his tech nine and a headshot into Plovsky. Stops it from completely concluding. But a little vent. Drop smoke, or at least to suggest that's a possibility, obscures the view of Rares that he confirms he doesn't have a clue. Smoke's still up for another 10 seconds. If he was to try and maneuver, it would be now. Bomb lost top side, so Licky's objective kind of decided for him to post it up on this line. And that's the perfect weapon for the job. Okay, we did this yesterday. It was the final round of the first half on Dust 2. And then they won the round. Well, we didn't we didn't commentate for an entire round and they won it. Yeah. To get a 12-3 half on the way out the door. Should we try it earlier today, right, as opposed to waiting to the end? Should we try it now? Because, you know, we apparently we have more powers than we realize. You're right. Okay. I'm and all we have to do is shut our mouths. I'm, and that's something I'm good at. We do get paid by the word, guys. So understand we're making a massive sacrifice here. Okay. Well, let's see how this shapes up. Round six, everybody. Did you cross your fingers and your toes? I promise I did. Okay, well... Um, I will say that that was actually quite... Uh, like watching with their CT rotates. Yeah. Seeing how quickly all the gaps were filled when they did have to move a piece around. Like it's, I it's, it's nice, isn't it? It is satisfying. Yeah. Yeah, like seeing Fozy... Oh, yeah. He started off with his trophy info, but as soon as he was needed in Yard and Hampus wanted info as well. It was cool. Very yeah, nice. So this is a, a timeout that has been called here by LFR, and I'm very happy to see this. Right? I'm very happy to see this. We spoke about it yesterday. You know, the idea that, look, if you're six or seven rounds on the trot in the hole, take a timeout. You get four of them, you may as well, because the game can get away from you very quick. Now, the same situation again. These plays that they've made have relatively been fast, they haven't waited out the CT utility. Hampus has been able to position himself in great angles and little sneaky spots to get the opening kill and make their life very disruptive early. Uh, taking the pace out of it, look, that could be one option, right? Just to allow all the CT protocol utility to be siphoned through before you make a bit of a choice. But it is going to be difficult regardless, right? But the pace of the game that LFO are playing right now, this is allowing NIP to play heads up Counter Strike. They just will have the information come their way. We take the fight, we play the rotates, as you mentioned, and they're going to be able to do this one by the book. But this is starting to get into a very bleak state of affairs here early today. Yeah, and they've gone for another one. Attempt at a kind of quasi buy. They'll have enough for a proper rifle into the next. And so just going for Ooh. that util and goodness. Two down. Yeah, and the orb to rotate, right? So if Fozy misses, he could get overrun if Fozy misses. It's a big if. It's in capital letters. APOC takes his time. He's still but, awkward. Yeah, but yeah, not anymore. Both having no issues. Lovely from Sterling, though. And hang on, Sterling's... Oh, okay. Sterling now we're cooking. Savage combining with that pistol connection. Now flying up the vents. Oh, into Hampus. How is he ready for both of them? It's a slither angle. 
Takes them both down. Go on now, Savage. Finish the job. Looking good. Low HP. Rez is already up. And oh, he's not looking for it. Looking for it at all. That nade is perfect. Oh, he actually gets away. one HP. One HP. Alive. He's alive. Oh, and he gets the dink. Absolute robbery. <sighs> okay. Well, it was an interesting light to buy, right? A couple of, like, well, we had it happen yesterday, Sand Sterling's a pistol player, continues to prove that one here. So a couple of nice shots from him. Unfortunate Savage couldn't get that one across the line. But that nade, it, one HP, oh, bloody hell. Yeah, the fact that Rez is even going for that shows that we're in that mindset we were talking about a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like, Hampus accounting for that as well. I'm not sure if he was accounting for the vent up and over or if he was just waiting for Savage to try and make a play down the vent. But either way, accounted for the gap. Yeah. It's an up here, their seventh. And this is uh, speed running right now, Nuke. Oh, looks like we've missed one. Yeah, look, it does. Okay, it's just going to go from bad to worse, isn't it? Like, if they can't get the smoke walls up properly, they're giving up their information, then they're taking a tag. Hampus is now actually starting to hunt APOC, who, yeah, sure, has made it down. But at what cost? And this is how Nuke can feel at times. Just shot in the backside, APOC now. Watches as his team with their knives out, walking back to yard, back where it all started. I think this is sometimes important to have have games like this because I think sometimes this, the spectrum by which the game is played is can, can be easy to kind of just uh, disregard. But when you get to see NIP here, there's just no gaps for them. And LFO don't yet seem to have a refined theory as to how to break through. Yeah, I look, uh, with the pace they're trying to take the space, there's so many things that you need to condition them for. Like, first of all, the smoke wall needs to go down properly. But then second of all, like, okay, maybe you needed to play a top silo so Hampus couldn't creep down behind APOC, right? Was there a need to have everybody in lobby while APOC was taking that space? It's just the little details here, but they are just going to get peeled apart. There's going to be... I don't want to say this is going to be a 16-0 because obviously we have a lot more rounds of Counter-Strike, but we're going to trend to a, a single-digit smashing for LFO, right? Like... um as much as we want to paint a picture that they can be learning, it's hard to take a lot out of a 16-0 loss. Like, um, it's also hard to take a lot out of a 16-14 loss where you lost a couple clutches and you go, ah, but like a 16-0, this game, right, it goes so quick. When you're losing like this, it, 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 they probably feel like they've been in the server for two minutes. Yeah, well, yeah, for sure. And that, that look, I, I know that feeling better than most. Uh, I've been 16 0 a couple of times in my career, and it, it, it really does suck, but you feel helpless. It goes away from you. We had one time out from them. It's not like they've just taken this all on the chin and... Oh, that's the way to go. Keeping it light. Campus, quite the opposite, and a stylish self nade. He's actually uh, done some work for LFO there. Oopsie daisies. Well, this is where they look the most threatening so far, is with the pistols in their hands and Sterling's still up. So let's see if that $700 hand cannon can find ahead. You say you can't, uh, you know, learn much from a 16 0. Um, but we, as we've presented, this is obviously this journey ideally would be, and trip to Pro League would be a learning experience. Mm. Could you, could they learn through? I mean, it's not it's not any different from watching just an NIP demo against Navi, is it? It's not like watching this demo and learning from the CT rotations and maybe you just steal some of its role. I don't know. So what are the lessons you could have found in a demo from HLTV. But that's the thing, right? So so there's everybody can sit and watch a Navi demo, and if everybody wants to put enough time in, they can do perfecto smokes, they can do electronics pathing, they can do all, standing. Yes, yeah. but you can mirror it based off of what you see him do. But the understanding this of is. why that's the difference, right? That's the theory of Counter Strike, and it's one thing to watch something can mimic it it's another thing to actually be able to comprehend it because on the fly things are changing right we don't actually know what the call was from boomage we don't have that information we just see what they do right we don't understand okay is this something that they've prepped for this team specifically is there certain flight paths that they take that are different do they have tendencies that they're going up against what's the understanding is the team as an organism if they see this smoke this molly this flash so there's all of those details there that are the unknown so that's what you have to experience but you can base and you can theory craft but you'll never truly understand unless you get to sit them down and pick their brain but yeah, now I'm starting to take a couple of liberties here, right? Deep Molotov over towards the hut position, actually going to take a lot of space here as Plopsky. And we mentioned this very thing to Hampus yesterday. When you're up against a team that you feel more confident against, you know, does it start to happen? Is there a gear? Is there a call? Or do players just start taking more audacious plays? Well, Hampus up and over. So audacious as he goes on down APOC. We'll find them an opening and some space. So this is looking better. Yeah, and if he stays, if he just lives, Fozy's going to have to be very paranoid. Clearing. Oh, Savage caught out. Plopsky just catches the timing. Well, he's aware. Yeah, he's certainly aware. And 
If anyone could just draw the crosshair away, damn, they both gets away with that one. And through, the, through the lip of the wall there, isn't it? Yeah, this attack's got him booked. Big one from Hazard. Hazard gets two. Gives us a bit of a round here. Sterling partners up with him, and they have got time. Rez responsible for top side. Oh, that looked... It's precise, isn't it? Very precise. I think his nose is on the monitor. Sterling. Oh, not easy with the bait and switch. They are doing it all, and it looks so easy. It's just like breathing for an NIP. 10 to 0, LFO yet to get off the starting marks. This is, uh, as the desk discussed, a little bit of a surprise as well, just to see that their pick is uh, changing from that dust too. Yeah, look, I, I think when you go up against NIP, we, uh, we were joking about it last night, Ben and DJL, the, the, the coaches respectively of both teams right side, and I was uh, chatting with Ben, I was like, Ben, you're not going to get to play dust two tomorrow, mate. DJL's going to ban you. He's like, come on, man, play, play us on dust two. Come on, you know, but... Uh, Understandably so. Oh, Ben stepped in for another tactical timeout. We, we were working uh, working on the hand signals yesterday, making sure he understood exactly the process required. But yeah, Apoch did get them a nice opener. This is a nasty death to concede from Savage, just as Plopsky waiting it out. He sat there staring at that hut aggress for a while, just catching it as that lobby player. And I tell you what, I mean, I will always highlight, regardless of the team and the state of affairs, that that lobby responsibility. I've seen some players really master it and others completely eaten up by it. That's the thing, right? And that's also knowing, like, because it's a, it's a job, it's a role that you have within the team, but you need to understand when you need to be on high alert. Well, once you've taken yard control, what's the current meta? CT's push lobby, right? So that's a point where you need to maybe, I don't know, take a position a little bit more passive or be wary of uh, how you can get on out of dodge, have an extra teammate or two. Right. It's just all of these details here, but we're going for a top pop again. Here's the U tilt. Uh, maybe Plopsky not hitting his first few to stand and go down for one. Hamper 16 frags and counting. Straight bullets into main, but Hamper's still going to push through the smoke. Is he oh, this be? is big. Yeah, this is real big. Ben, they're not going to be expecting this. Hidden from the cursory glances, and he could be a late arrival. Four with a rifle. I mean, you can see Hazard's managed to grab one. Fuzi's going to try and draw attention. The key. Oh, oh he was ready. All right. That chance now. It. Real chance now. This is uh, the closest they've come. Bomb half gone. Licky, known. S attack low. Licky, another on the tech nine. Go on, finish the job. fozy has gone and looking good in the hood to finish with style and two alive. Rifles for good measure. LFO are on the board. There you go, right? A little bit of a delayed top pop there, and they've they've made sure to avoid that 16-0 scoreline. So that's uh, actually a big positive, right? That, that's something they can be on your back thinking about that. So huge to grab one here. The flashes, it didn't look like uh, they were blind coming into top side there. Must be landing behind the back of the site. It's a good position up on top of the silo there, and Savage gets it done, gets it across the line, and now the guns are back out. Five rifles, no AWP equipped right here for Sterling. It'll be the silenced M4 instead. Let's see how far they can push the issue. A 10-5. LFO have thrown a full wall of smokes, I thought. I thought, no. Now they're arriving, a little diagonal, so we get to see how Apoch's journey there outside does go. Does true. So they're going to be a top split. Yeah, no one actually has the info. Hampers has been kept honest. Go on. Go on, Epox. Swing it in. Licky's through. It's attack on a reload. LFO need another. It's Hampers from behind that can ruin their day. Tagged away. Rez swings as they're distracted, but they react accordingly. Looking good in a potential 3v1. Could very well be another LFO round two consecutive unless Hampers has his way. 17 now and six. But he just doesn't really have the health for this. No, I think he's saving as well. It's crazy when you think of a 10-0 scoreline, how quickly they've been able to siphon through a lot of that cash there from NIP. So, look, lost bonus into the next, the 1900 mark. There's going to be a little bit coming on through. Rez has a bunch to go for a drop, and Hampus will be able to drop one as well. So the buy won't be a problem, but uh, maybe a few more questions to be asked if he did go down in this one on three. But there you go, a bit of a delayed top split. That diagonal wall was deeper, right? Traditionally, we see it so it covers off main, where APOC would have to lurk through the smoke. He gets to actually just have a full, clear path to walk in. Much more dangerous, I would imagine, right? Because it's a heads-up fight. Normally, you do it on a timing, so but it worked on out there. You could see, coming in behind, smoked off from that position was Hampus. He came through, he got one, but didn't want to overcommit for more. And they actually caught s -Attack on a timing. You know, mm. it's not. we've seen a lot of LFO getting caught on timing. This time, s -Attack unaware it was popping. Like, as soon as he's just finished spraying the door, he eats a flash and there's two people in his sight, just like that. I love that from Licky, though, right? The fact that they've come out here, they've called this round, he's stuck to his flight paths of what he needed to do, right? That's a hard clear. That's a hard clear on the CT event there, whether it's the teller, the reload, or whatnot, but he's completely dedicated himself to that. He's not flicking his crosshair around trying to take all the fights. He knows the fight he needs to win and even manages to double up. So here we go. Guns back out. How far... 
Can the Aussies plus the New Zealand up push the issue? Apoc again, now getting more opportunities to lurk behind these smokes yard. And, well, had more opportunities to lurk, but just gets found straight through. Rez beams him on down. Now, typically, you would see 4v5 disadvantage, see those troops start to congregate towards maybe ramp or back towards another wall of smokes or towards the lobby for a top and pop. It does look like you're going to go yard. Like he's been hanging out there for this and they do have, I'm counting, two smokes. So we'll see what ends up here. The thing is with something like this, you're hoping that you've, you've done enough to kind of be able to cross secret without too many tells. But they are lining up some nades. Now that one will secure the lip of main. So if they wanted to try and wrap around to heaven, sure, but Rez is the player they have to deal with. They're hearing a lot of this, so there's so many audibles right now. They're set up strong, like you're going to have to try and break this tower, Rez. Fozy, not going to let that slip. Hazard watching now, and two casualties for LFO. 30 seconds, and it's very telegraphed. Yeah, they're going to be lazy on this as well, because Fozy was ladder base. Oh, Rez looked away, just in time. Whew. That should be it. Uh, Savage, not ready for a second. God, their setup is... Nasty to break through. There's just players everywhere, every elevation. You're not breaking through that. The man advantage does get converted convincingly. Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. You remember when Nuke used to have that catwalk that they added in that went all the way around? It went from like main roof and you could yeah. go, oh, that was wild. That was a very yeah. strange change. Back in the 1.6 days, there used to be the big catwalk on Yard. The CTs could go up on as well. So that was one of the things that by that getting removed, these smoke walls became possible. Because when you could get up on that catwalk, you could actually see over the smokes. And Nuke has had a lot of variations. I actually put a picture up on Twitter like a couple of days ago um, of Nuke that we were playing back in, I think it was like 2013. And someone was like, is that Source? Like, no, that's early day uh, Nuke from CSGO. And it was it was pretty similar to the one that a lot of people would have experienced all those years ago. But it's crazy to see how far this map has come and all the new variations that are made possible. Go through. <laughs> Just laughing that APOC got more flash by his flash than Rez did. If I'm blind, he's blind, right? Right. Yeah, I can't see him, so... He can't see me. Two getting off to the garage as the smoke does fade. That's Hampers' responsibility. Down. Oh dear. Hazard just gets sat down in the barber's chair. Hampus and Sweeney Todd. Yo, Licky though. He's known. And the setup, as always, it seems like they're, they're traveling around in pairs. Every time you try and take a fight, there is backup available. This angle. Too easy for Plopsky. He is just a thing. Dynamic for the ninjas. Lecky, though, is individually capable of winning out these duels in these head-to-heads. He baits the orb shot. He is going to get swung on from heaven to put 12 on the board. LFO, yeah, as we discussed, not much to learn in a 16-0, but it could be something to learn if we get themselves a 12-3 and a one pistol. It's starting to look a little bit better, right? They're getting a bit more space now. The, the smoke walls are actually landing as they should, not being disrupted. Uh, but it's also hard. Like, that flash goes off uh, and has us in a position where it's perfect for the pick there, right? So it's just these little maneuvers from NIP. You can see the class of a team like this. And I, it's, it's good. I, I, look, when you think about this NIP team and all the ups and downs they've had to be able to perform now at this level, it's good to see. You heard uh, Hampers before attesting a lot to the combination of Threat and DJL, the new coach. But uh, yeah, look at this. Final round. Two straight through the smoke there. Esther tag. Well, he's heard the vent drop as well. More than enough for him. Well, that could not have been a worse 15 second opener for them. Uh, yeah. United, two to the smoke. They know where you are. Those he's got his jewelies out and they're working fine. There's a chance here on that trajectory. You could work it out. Has a caught out and just Sterling. The Mac 10 1v5. Everyone's favorite. Mm. We've seen this one before. Any a time. Amanek holds his breath. Well, you know, he could actually embody Sterling right now. He won't be in the server later, so maybe he can True. use his abilities. We do have Alexi B. Have you missed the news? He's back. Alexi back. They really need him as well because it's going to be hard for G2 to make it out of the Big group in the top well, three. Yeah. In Tropic, they've been looking pretty tidy, playing some well regiment and Counter Strike. So that's just giving us a view of Nuke right now, guys. Take it all in. See what it's all about. Doesn't want to give a sound cue up, so we'll go through the open door. And there's a crawl bucket of water of reality for you as the bomb's lost and they're looking at both of his approaches. So here he comes, a, a one dig needed and a one dig found. It's the Deagle boy. And now if he could just 
Ooh, missed the shot. He could find him on the hunt. There's another, of course. And rounding this corner, he's maybe not expecting it. Back turn, does manage to round the corner. He's got so many nades right now, actually, you know? He could drop a smoke in the side or to the doors to give himself something to work with here. If they don't hunt him too quickly, he can get the bomb down. That's a whole lot more than they were accounting for. Not able to do so. Make it 13, good attempt at Sterling. Makes it a bit more costly. But Ninja's in pyjamas on LFO's pick. 13 to the good. We'll take a quick timeout on BRB with your second half. Back in business and so her NIP. Look, it's top the group. They can secure themselves top three with a victory today. And it looks like it is certainly on or in the cards by whatever which you prefer. Either or. We, we don't mind around here. You can do either. You've been accept accepting of what's around the corner. D2, though, losing to Fnatic yesterday throws the group into disarray. Two wins, one loss. Mao's the same. And now we'll talk about that after this pistol. Charging oh, dear. Right Apoc, big on the clicks. And it looks good, Haza smashes another face. Another as well, hot lead to the ninjas, they're gone. Four, still standing, on expert odds on your screen. It doesn't get higher than that. One to nine, but there you go. That's a third round, and I was hoping we'd see a CT pistol go their way. We'll extend play and hopefully get us to see what the ninjas in pajamas can do to get sweat on the brow. The pistols, I think, are LFO's best, uh, best little thing in the arsenal, right? Yesterday, we think about that ancient game against Entropic. They were picking up some of those uh, lighter by rounds. You get a couple of five, seven, Bangaroonies going off, and that was tidy. So just a, uh, a bit of a all-in ramp rush. A timeout called. The first called from the side of NIP. Interesting. Maybe a little bit to discuss here, because Plopsky's already invested. The same looking to happen with Hampus and Co. So, yeah, just talk through how they can close this down as quick as possible. You don't want to give it any team. It doesn't even matter that it is LFO, yeah. ranked 94th in the world right now. You don't want to give anybody a chance to get back into a match, especially the first game of the day. I was talking to Hazza when they were all sitting down outside, and I was, and uh, the conclusion he came to and said out loud was, uh, yeah, I just keep playing scared. And, yeah. And uh, I've struggled to... Uh, I didn't have a kind of a weight and any advice to give him in that respect because I understand why you are. It's very hard to play exactly the same when you know you're not the opponents are not exactly the same and the expectations have already been subverted by what the ninjas have been throwing at you. But yeah, playing scared, I'm sure, is, is a hard habit to shake. That's one of the things that we talk about when people transition from online to land. That's that's one of the main things. And But this is different for them, obviously, right? But it's one of the things when it's like a big arena match, do, doing the things that you would do at home, doing yeah. the things that you would do in practice. Uh, whereas in this situation, you don't want to mess up. You don't want to be the reason that you're going to lose the round, right? So you can understand why they're feeling that level of pressure. Let's see if they can withstand it because they are coming his way. Famous on the box. Hazard, there's the first. He's not scared. Stands and sticks around. Wasn't ready for the second flash. He's going to get caught here. And that, perhaps, is the difference. In Australia, they only throw one. Well, that's the thing, right? It didn't even look like he was fully blind. There, Obviously, we don't have exactly what just went on down. But there you go, trading back yeah. and forth. Two rifles can be scooped up now. This is not the kind of round they can afford to lose. A second round force. This is where those experienced ninjas are going to really make it hurt. Tighten the thumb screws. Oh, Rez has such this a powerful a position here. Runner. I don't even know if they clear this. Oh, he's trying to clear his deep corner. He gets the same to dance. Oh, Rez misses. That's Savage a chance. Punishes. We do need to see them start to close the gap. Licky has a kit here. It's all on Licky. Can't lose it here in the corridors. Bomb is half ticked already. Safe assumption by the double doors. Licky's getting run down. They need help. Need help. Kit That's on the, the kit. floor. No time for this now, unless you go for a 10 second, uh, Savage. Oh, bodyguard, he's giving it a go. Five seconds left on this pose, he's not gonna defend. He's not. Three, oh, two, oh, oh. one, Savage, yes! LFO just about pulled that one out of the hat. It got very sketchy. And NIP, I mean, considering 
uh, how we've seen LFO's second rounds go. Give him a tutorial as to how to make them costly. Yeah, so Hazard does a great job getting one here, but maybe a bit of the conversation he was having with you playing in here, because, like, yeah, you, you can drop and fall, or you can hang around for a little bit too long and get caught. So, look, this is the thing, that you can't have any indecision in these moments either. If you're going to commit to the fight, you commit to the fight. He didn't have an opportunity to shoot back because he yeah. decided to tuck tail. And this here, Rez, look, he had a powerful position, but unable to convert right there. Great little bodyguarding from Savage as well. Down to just a bit of a partial investment here from NIP. Not going to use all their pennies, but almost lose all their health on Hampus, who is down to 10, gets across. Four players under now. See how that rotates, Archad. As oh, is down I, here. I want to rotate rank out of uh, A to Z. He's got Sterling close by two. He's caught the aid and it's hit on time oh. and in good form. Him. Yes, indeed. Sterling takes four in quick succession. And only Esatag, who did not quite descend. He's hanging out in the yard with his P P250. Hey, guys. Hi. Um, sorry, I here. didn't get the memo. Wait, you said oh. rush down secret straight away. E, I thought you said ye are. You got a bit of a lesson yesterday, didn't you, by the way? What's that? Because uh, Ben was saying he's a bit of a, an AFL guy, which is uh, Aussie rules That's football. That's right, yeah. You, and we, you, you learned what a spec he was. Yeah, yeah, because of my very limited experience of AFL is seeing these crazy clips of dudes mantling on another man's shoulders. Yeah. And that's a specky. That's a specky. Does that mean we can have speckies in Counter-Strike? Yeah, like we could use it. Uh, no, it's like, no. Well, Goomba's a kill. You're not really killing the guy you're mar. It's, you're getting that, like, it's Just, a big, it's a, it's a big thing to achieve, yeah, a specky. It's like jumping over a dude's head as you dunk in basketball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You kind of, you're, you're flexing on them as you're beating them. I think we also like it's a, a screamer as well. It's used in a, in a good one, yeah. like not as a negative one. So that comes into it. But I forget that I am Australian until there's other Australians around and then it, the twang comes back a little bit. I, I hear it in my own head. It's it's wild. But NIP, the guns are out. Let's see. Squeaky door blown up. A deep nade from APOC. They're going to oh be completely shy of the mark. I thought some damage was destined. So avoided Hampus and Rez. And... See, this is late. They're doing the smoke wall late. Part of my is he playing scared uh, line of questioning. It's good to see Hazard not only get overrun on ramp, but then proceed to push through and set up aggressively trophy. It's going to be it. very powerful here to yeah. mid to late round if they don't come his direction. Looks like they're setting up a top split here. Dickie's responsible with just an MP9. They will just do the jiggle smoke defense. This is a good angle. Oh, APOC giving a freebie. Won't be ready for res. Silently tracking him. Rez can do a lot here. Apox is going to assume it's clear. It's been too quiet. Hazar. Oh, and the frags keep coming. LFO picked apart now. Yeah, this is very difficult. Needs one back. It gets it. Okay, good stuff from Sterling. Scampering ramp. Last three NIP members. Is Sterling going to pick again? He can't now. Denied by the Molly. Okay, vent rotate is available. Ah, the MP9's lower. That's the problem here. Licky, what can you get done, my friend? On. Nothing is the answer. Plopsky having fun today. He's been looking sharp, hasn't he? Been hitting some good first bullet accuracy right there. It's good to see Plopsky back in this form. Always had a fun story, didn't he? Plopsky was one of the guys we saw come through at, uh, was it Dreamhack Masters Malmo? Oh, yeah. yeah, and the whole story of how he was there a couple years earlier watching NIP. Not, yeah, not only that, it was the one where NIP won, you know, like the whole That's right. chanting ninjas in pajamas, forest winds in Sweden, everyone's loving life. And that was, uh, yeah, that was, I think, enough to, to prove to his parents that this was a fair objective to have. Yeah, well, look, uh, you, you can obviously see how this like, support of, of, of the younger generation is coming on through. Ben's a prime example. I know we're talking about him a lot, but there's, there's another, a couple of other parents down there in Australia who are the same. I know Inz's mum is very involved. Yeah, it's great. And I mean, what, I think what we learned was that, you know, you, you take them to an event and then they see just what's going on. Yeah. I think, uh, ben was telling us about the, you know, his visit to the Kudos Bank Arena. And the, he went to all three in a row. All of the IEMs. And he's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, son, this is, this is legit. This is legit. This is not just weird men on the internet. Yeah. This is, uh, I mean, in his mind, this is a four. <laughs> so that's 14 for an IP now. So let's see. They just kind of need to usher this one across the line. I don't think there is any doubt right now that the Ninjas are going to be picking this one up. No, but I wouldn't mind like a Sterling pop-off orb shut down for the okay. confidence. I wouldn't mind seeing APOG farm a little bit more for the okay, okay. same reason. I'm with you. And oh, little gap, loud steps. APOG chooses not to engage. Now, will he just opt to punish on this? They're not going to know. They're not going to know unless it's deliberate. Perfect. Two down to open up proceedings. More to come, but I think they'll have to be held at bay by the gap. APOG's giving it up. And Fosey's trying to catch a timing APOC response. Good clears. Yeah, really nice clears. Very procedural. Molly will force Savage out of the sight. Is this going to spread? Did Ezzetag not 
quite nail it. Mean Savage is safe on site. For oh, space though. We got some room up and over. I don't know if Haz is accounting for this right now. They know that Fozzy was around, but where's he gotten to? Looking. Oh, yeah, Haz is checking, and now bomb down hell. This is looking great for a sixth. That's a tag, a threat. Standard clear, not the standard result. Six now in the bank for LFO, and if they can continue to run away with four alive, they'll start building up the bank to hold and defend their honor. Yeah, money over there for NIP probably seems uh, that DJO would want more of a half buy than a full investment here, because Hampus could get an AK head armor or Galil instead. Rez could get an AK with some utility and the same for S attack, but the other two might be a little bit light on. So. Uh, they don't have to fully invest here. I think one of the things that I've liked seeing out of NIP a bit more is the way that they manage their cash. Like, they know, okay, well, we got the loss bonus of 2,900. We can spend this much. We can drop this to this guy, right? They can make their buy look threatening by just pinching their pen pennies and managing the cash. So a couple of rifles here and a couple of pistols alongside. Not going to allow LFO to have, uh, well, the easiest of times. Uh. Licky could not be more dead. Oh, the bodyguard. Savage has done enough. It means Licky's at least back to put his name in the feed as well. Plopsky tucked in. And Fozzy. Half health. Licky, this favors you. The barrel takes off. The last forever. Somehow he's still alive. And Fozzy can reposition, but he's lost his teammate in the process. Sterling shuts down Hampton's adventure outside. And there you have it. A bigger test. NIP. Do go down and make it costly. Two bodies dropped. Some rebuys forced. But yeah, this is going to become a respectable scoreline here, Chad. Yeah, I, I think that uh, if they can... Ushering it across the line is still a, a certainty. It's just a question of how juicy can looking for org make this... Yeah, can they make them sweat? Can they make them go, all right, hold up, guys. Uh, you know, there's always a moment. There's always a moment where, all right, let's pull up our socks here. But is that moment going to come to a little too late? I, I don't think so. But uh, it's another lighter-ish buy from NIP here. They've obviously gone all in, but that's a tag only with a Galil, right? Oh. Not full nades for everybody. Aggressive from Sterling. I'm gonna get caught on the jump here. So I'm honestly going for lines like that. Well, they should be on high alert towards ramp and topside now, because yard's called clear. Yeah, let's see if Hazard can handle business. Hamper's throwing out the wall of smokes. Yeah, coming. Oh, great pre-fire. Turns the flash, but dies on the swing. Plopsky's positioning and spacing very well drilled. And Hazard just has to say ramp lost. Two players rotated lower already for LFO, so they're responding to this quickly. Okay. Interesting they've opted to open the doors and throw out smoke of their own design. Pushing around it, Apoco does go down, and then I'd be just starting to splurge and spread. Ampus, however, falling to Savage on top. So now with a bomb down lower. Hard retake. Very hard retake, and he's not even sure what's down and waiting for him in the vents. Sterling at least will access ramp and discover it's empty. So hesitant. The unknown. It's very easy to fear. He hasn't got a clue. Very light on time here, boys. It's a bit half-hearted. You've got to find him as well. It's not bad. Oh. oh that would have been a nice combination if you hit the wall bang off the info and the nade kill. But uh, three for Plotsky in this round. He's at the top of the scoreboard. And you know the desk were highlighting it that... Hampus is it's good to have Plopsky. Oh, oh that that, that really from Shane. Yeah. RIP. That puts 15 on the board. And we'll be ready to see one last bite of the cherry. What did NIP pick? Uh overpass coming up next. Yeah, I thought they might take it to Ancient, because uh, watching the Ancient game yesterday with Hampus, so maybe maybe just he, he saw a couple of things he might want to uh try and get on top of. But uh, overpass as well, it's a bit more of a technical map, so. They will get to be starting on the T side NIP, and that was a map even when, remember when Twist was on the roster, we were really quite content with the way they'd approach it. So let's see what happens here, Sterling with the up and over. He's going to be flashed off, pushed back, and having to respect the early util. Damage done to S attack, that ain't bad, and Savage, well, we've seen him do some nasty things with the 5-7. See so if he can do it again. Just trying to hold on here, LFO. Well, they're all returning to lobby. Savage yet to activate. But they know S attack is low. They may have heard some sound on that connection. But look at what the smokes have done yard. Two players from LFO are lower, right? So if they top go top pop and they don't get any kills here, LFO are in trouble. Oh ah brutal headshot from S attack. Low HP crouches in and completely hooks Savage. Nice from Starling. Starling? The bird? Oh, well, it was very star-like. <laughs> 
Sterling, though, has actually repelled the invaders. They'll go elsewhere. Hampus has cancelled his project secret, so it does seem very imminent. Hot toes. Pop and not even pop, a little cruel perhaps on their hands and knees. They've played that position a lot. Licky's been there very, very frequently, and now it's just two remaining Licky and Hazza. Not long for this world. Hazza up against the world, up against those pajama ninjas. And their smoke locked up, posted up. And he knows his fate is sealed. Thank Aww. You. I'm coming. Here I come. Hey, guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, a bit of a threat onto Fozy, but they are just standing still. The wall bang hits and has up. Out of time. You got to go. May as well throw yourself into Plopsky's crosshairs. Make that, what is that grand total from Plopsky? Does do a good haul. 24 for him. Hampus as well, having a lot of fun with it. And a very one-sided affair. Convincing stuff. NIP set for success and to top their group. Group A continues, as does this series after the break.